Elemental and elusive, this doorkeeper holds the keys to countless blessings and powerful ends. Breach the unknown. Wisp is now. Alright, punks, let's get into this Wisp build. We've got three builds for you today. All three forma. And each of these builds have different uses. Uh, starting off with our main build that we're going to be using pretty much the whole time is the Winged Whisper. Starting from the top left to right, we have Energy Siphon, Aerial Vantage, Primed Continuity, Umbra Intensify, Primed Flow, Adaption, Blind Raged, Gladiator Fitness, Stretch, and Rage. Our Arcanes are Arcane Energize and Arcane Guardian. With a duration of 155, efficiency 45%, range 145%, and strength 243%, this build offers a lot of energy at a high cost, but one of Wisp's interesting facts are most of her abilities cost very low, and she has a huge energy pool to drain from. So that's why I went with uh, Guardian Fitness and Rage, kind of to build off that as a defense structure. With Adaption, she's very hard to kill. You tie that in with her first ability, Reservoir, and cast the Violent Molt, Haste Molt, and Shock Molt. Those you only have to cast once, then you can always return to them and get your duration back up. It's really interesting, so you don't have to recast these little plants over and over again. You can just return back. So she's really good for defense, mobile defense, interception. A lot of the newer events where you're kind of in a one area and then you move to the next area, which is really nice. The max health you're going to get from this is 729. And your health a second is going to be 72.9. Now that's not just a big chunk of 72.9. That's one second is going to have 72 milliseconds built into that health mod. So you're going to gain health a little bit at a time, which is really great. It works with Adaption and Gladiator Fitness to keep you from staggering, which is very interesting. You might stagger in the beginning until Adaption kicks in, and then you'll be completely fine. It would take a large hit to actually kill you. As for Haste Molt, you're going to get a Speed Multiplier with this build of 48% and a Fire Rate of 72%. Shock Molt is going to give you a status chance of 100% of course, and your range is going to be 21 meters. This is really good for uh, just taking down the enemies. Your secondary ability is uh, going to be your Will of the Wisp, where you cast your little guy. Now this has a very interesting fact. If you hold down the two, it will go faster. And when you release the two, you'll teleport right there. Now you can also tie this in with your third ability, Breach Surge, so that when you cast Breach Surge while the Willow is, is out, you'll get two Breach Surge for the cost of one. So that's really nice. Speaking of Breach Surge, this build gives you a radius of 21 meters, blind duration of 24 seconds, damage multiplier of 4.86, which is really good, and a status chance of 48%. Uh, so it's really nice. Now for her final ability, uh, Soul Gate, this build's going to drain about 38 right off the bat, and the drain per second is 12. Uh, you're looking at 2,430 damage at a range of 58 meters. So you've got a good amount of damage of fire and radiation and 58 meters. Now, if you hold down the right click or the fire button, it's going to actually buff that damage up, and you're going to also drain more energy. Now, this isn't one of my favorite abilities of her. I really like the first, second, and third ability much more than this. This feels like kind of like... It's just not enough damage, and she can't use any of her other abilities, so she becomes a stationary target. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're using this. Now with this build and the weapons that I chose with it, I'm also going to be uh, putting that around the Aerial Advantage mod, uh, which is great for her because her passive is when she's up in the air, she's invisible. What this does is when you land on the ground, it puts five enemies asleep that were damaged while you're aim gliding for six seconds. Now, this six seconds seems kind of strange. Sometimes the enemies will only be stunned for two or three seconds. I think that's because they take damage or they wake up through some other way. But it still gives you an opportunity to get down there and get to taking care of some enemies or stun some bigger guys. As for survivability, this build has two defense mods, the Adaption and Gladiator's Fitness, tied in with Rage. Uh, it's really strong, and uh, if you get Arcane Guardian, you're going to be getting a lot of armor, preventing more damage in, so she can take a hit, which is really amazing for this. All right, let's get to our next build, Singing Whisper. Singing Whisper is exactly the same as Winged Whisper. We're just removing Gladiator's Fitness for Overextend at 9. This is going to give you a larger range for her Breach Surge. This will also re increase the range of Soul Gate. 
uh, giving you a more of a distance fighter. That's pretty much what this one is. It's more of a distance, hang back and let the tank take all the damage uh, while you're healing them up and taking care of smaller guys. It still has the area advantage as well, but you're going to be kind of hanging back with this build, more or less casting spells and keeping your teammates alive. And our final build is straight in the action. This build is more for close range and personable. This is called Stinging Whisper. It has Corrosive Projectile, Power Drift, Prompt Continuity, Gladiator Resolve, Prime Flow, Adaption, Blind Rage, Gladiator Fitness, Constitution, and Hunter Adrenaline. This build has a higher duration of 183, lower range of 100, and strength is just a little bit below with 214%. But what this one does is it works really well with the Gladiator mods, and I'm tying that in with the uh, builds that use the Gladiator mods, uh, all from a melee. You get a little bit extra health. It's not really that crazy. You're tying in Gladiator Fitness and Adaption with Hunter Adrenaline to keep the energy flow going and also to stay alive in those heated battles. This build is directly in the face of the enemy and just continuously fighting. Really like this one. For our primary, we switched over to the Linza. I really like how this works with her. You can shoot the enemies, freezing them, and then blowing them up and opening them up for our melee weapon. One of the other great things about Wisp and the Linza is if you blow yourself up, you can hit that two really fast, which will give you invincibility for a few seconds. Now you can use this to survive the blast of the Linza. This is really good because sometimes with the Linza, you can kind of blow yourself away. So this really gets you in. If you know you're hitting it, hit that two, hit that two back, and you can get out. Um, it's really also good if you block yourself in a hallway with the Linza and you're blowing stuff up, you can hit that two, move it past the explosive area, and then respawn on the other side. So it gives you a lot of control with the Linza. I, I really like it. For our secondary, I created Cold Whispers with the Occupor. Now this is a really interesting build, and it's working directly with Wisp's abilities the Aereo mods. It has these little tendrils that pop out. Now you can land and put all those guys to sleep. And it also has blast damage with this build, um, which is going to knock and prone the enemies, which is where we're leading to with our melee. If you want to see how I can keep the tendrils going without losing them, without reloading, you can check the cards up above where we talk about the Akikor in more detail. For our melee, we have Wisp Spain, which is a Ripkus. Now this build has a ribbon mod on it and uses the Hunter's Bone Saw and it's going to have the new True Steel once I get it. Um, but this melee gives you critical damage, toxic damage, and melee damage with attack speed being very slow. So we definitely need to pair this up with Wisp's first ability which gives you attack speed which is good because it kind of tells you if you're not paying attention when things are slowing down you can just recast or get back to your little plant friend. Now with all those blast damage and other things that are proning enemies, it's going to really help with Hunter's Bone Salt. This is going to give you a lot more damage. And with conditional overload, doing gas damage and other procs, you can really take down high level enemies very quickly with this build. Uh, and it really plays true with what she's doing. This works for all three of the builds and is the main weapon that I've been using with her. Now I did try a few other weapons, melee weapons with her, and I really, I really liked how this one works out. All right, let's give this Wisp a run for her money in the Simulocker. Also guys, I'd like to remind everybody we have a Discord channel where we talk a lot about Warframe. The link is in the cards and the description below. All right, punks, enemy level 150 corrupted army we're gonna send after this Wisp. Let's simulate. First thing we're gonna do is summon our reservoirs. We're gonna get all three up here. Uh, this is pretty much what you would do before you start any battle, so that's just kind of normal. Right, let's jump into this. Now remember, if you're airborne with this build and you damage any opponents, they will go to sleep. We're using the Will of the Wisp there, we cast it ahead, and then we just used a Breach Surge. Now you see how it popped up up there as well? That was really good. Let's take out this Nullifier. Get in there for that final. Okay, and then we need to take those healers out. We're going to do another Breach Surge. We're going to set up another Reservoir on the back side of the opponents. Oh, oh, oh! Let's get back up on that. Not bad. Alright, let's nuke them a little bit with the uh, Linza. And then send in another Wither Wisp. Breach Surge, and jump right in. Maybe using our melee now. We're getting a huge amount of damage with this because of the Breach Surge. Jump back around. And you can see that prone damage is amazing with the Whip's Curse. Oh, 
painful. Now we have pretty much all control over this. So we're going to bring in our secondary. You can see how it just starts killing them. And it's going to do that blast damage. It's going to uh, prone certain enemies. High armored enemies are not going to be prone as easily. Oh, 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 oh. And my carrier actually just took him out. Another prone kill. Jump in there. And let's see, I think that's it. You can also teleport up there and do a breach surge, which is pretty amazing. We've got one last gunner. Let's jump in there, take him out. Oof. Tough little guy. And he's done. And you can see how Adaption and uh, Guardiator's Fitness is really working here. Uh, hardly any damage. Uh, quick movement speeds. This frame is, this frame is really nice. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to like and subscribe.